Hello, my name is Homer Knox and I'm with MenTeachingMen.com. I'm at the Life Center in Bradenton, Florida. The Life Center is a Christian residential discipleship program and I'm always glad to be working with the men in this program. I'm going to be teaching on this video on the Gospel of Mark chapter 9. And there's a lesson outline on this, of this teaching on the MenTeachingMen.com website and you're certainly welcome to draw that down and use that for God's glory. Um, I'll be using the New American Standard Bible translation for our scripture references in this teaching. Alright, let's review. We're going to talk about uh, the Gospel of Mark chapter 9. Let's review chapter 8. In chapter 8, Jesus feeds the 4,000 the Pharisees desire a sign from heaven. They continue to, to be a prick in his side, Jesus' side. The disciples don't take bread for their boat ride. And Jesus continues to comment to them, don't you understand? Uh, Jesus then heals a blind man. And he asks his disciples, who am I? And he starts to tell them, or continues to tell them, of his, of his upcoming suffering and death. And then he talks about denying oneself. And that was in chapter 8. In chapter uh, 9, we're going to start at verse 1. And he was saying to them, Truly I say to you, there are some of those who are standing here who shall not taste death until they see the kingdom of God after it has come with power. There's two words uh, that they use. They use the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. And they try to differentiate them, and there's explanations for them. And the way I'm going to look at it is the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven is all run by God, isn't it? I don't care where you go, he is. David said, if I go to Haiti, you're there. And so uh, I'm going to say it's all God's kingdom. Okay. And the kingdom of God is coming. I think he's talking about the church there. He's talking about Pentecost. And some saw it but all of them did not see it. Example, Judas certainly didn't see it. He was dead. And I'm sure in his followers there were the other ones that had passed or were killed or whatever that did not see it. Verses 2 to 8, verses 2 to 8, and six days later Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and brought them up to a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his garments became radiant and exceedingly white as no launderer on earth can whiten them. And Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to answer. For they were terrified. Uh, then a cloud formed, overshadowing them, and a voice came out of the cloud, This is my beloved son, Listen to him. And all at once they looked around and saw no one with them anymore except Jesus alone. Well, we see Jesus' inner circle again. Peter, James, and John. And these three men are going to be the, leader, the leaders of the church. Now, I've, I've got some study on this now. And one of the uh, Bible teachers said that he, Jesus took them along because they were the weakest apostles. That's very interesting. They were the weakest apostle, and they wouldn't have made it unless he drugged them along with them. thought that was very interesting, very interesting. They saw the glorified Christ. He had bodily changes. He had light come from within. Uh, Revelation 22.5, And they shall not have need of the light or lamp, nor the sun of the light, because the Lord God shall illumine them. Heaven will be lit by Jesus' light, the light coming from Jesus. We talked here about the light, how color is when you light it. Color is the way you light it. And so depending how you light, that's going to be the color. And I've been through a Savannah demonstration on that with light bulbs. You can take the same color and put it under different light bulbs and the light color changes. That's why people see different colors when they, when they have a vision of heaven. They, didn't, they said, boy, beautiful flowers, these colors I've never seen, and that's why. Because Jesus is that light. Elijah and Moses, these are probably going to be the two witnesses mentioned in Revelation 11.3. To 2 Peter 1.16. But we were eyewitness of His majesty. And they're talking about the transfiguration there. How wonderful to see that. How wonderful to see that. Verse 9, And they were coming down from the mountain. He gave orders 
not to relate to anyone what they have seen until the Son of Man should be raised from the dead, should rise from the dead. And they seized upon this statement, discussing on one another what rising from the dead might mean. Now, isn't that interesting? Up to now, they're totally lost on all this, aren't they? They're totally lost. They didn't understand. And they asked him, saying, Why is it that the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And he said to them, Elijah does come first and restore all things. And yet how is it written of the Son of Man that he should suffer many things and be treated with contempt? But I say to you, Elijah has come. And they did to him whatever they wished, just as it is written of him. Who's he talking about? John He's talking about John the Baptist. That's absolutely right. This is real interesting on verse 12 here. Uh, the second part, he says, Elijah does come first. And then he says, and how is it written that the Son of Man should suffer? Well, where did that come from? He's talking about Elijah. And then he goes back on verse 13 and talks about Elijah some more. I think it's very interesting. And I think what he's trying to do is to refute their thinking that he would live forever on the earth. They were thinking, I think that's what it means, why he did that. In verse 14, and when they came back, to the disciples they saw a large crowd around them and some scribes arguing with them and immediately when the crowd saw him that is Jesus they were amazed and began running up to greet him and he asked them what were you discussing with them and one of the crowd answered him teacher I brought you my son possessed with a spirit which makes him mute and whenever it seizes him it dashes him to the ground and he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and he stiffens out. And I told your disciples to cast it out, and they could not do it. And then in verse 19 it says, And he answered them and said, O oh, unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? How long should I put up with you? Bring him to me. Bring him to me. We need to always think about going to Jesus first, don't we? Especially with health issues. Go to Jesus first. And the inner circle on the top of the mountain were being blessed. It's failure at the bottom of the mountain, isn't it? They come down, it's failure. Yeah. And God's answer for healing, for physical healing, is three responses. Yes? What's the second response? No. no. What's the third response? Maybe. That's absolutely right. Maybe. Okay. Bring him to Jesus. Bring him to Jesus. That's the answer to most of ours and most of the world's problem. Go to Jesus. Verse 20, And they brought the boy to him, and when he saw him, immediately the spirit threw him into a convulsion. And falling to the ground, he began rolling about and foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And the father said, And from childhood. And it has often thrown him both in the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. And Jesus said, if I can. Here's an interesting comment. If I can. Now, all things are possible to him who believes. Isn't that right? Yeah. All things are possible. And why didn't we have a healing here from his uh, disciples? He's going to talk about that. It was a lack of faith, wasn't it? Yeah. Prayer and lack of faith. Yeah. Okay. And Jesus is a loving God. Questioning his authority is faithless and is a mistake. So even though we don't understand, I don't understand why. We prayed for this and we did this. We fasted and nothing's happening. Questioning his authority is always a mistake. Always a mistake. Why is God not moving in my life or others' life? And a lot of times I just got to say, I don't know. I don't have any idea. Uh, you can hunt that out. Takes time, takes effort, and, but he'll direct you and tell you why or give you an idea why that things aren't happening. Most of the time it's going to be from sin or rebellion. Verse 24, immediately the father cried out and began saying, I do believe, help my unbelief. Well, we have two problems. First of all, Jesus is going to be dealing with the spirit possession, isn't he? And the second problem is a lack of faith problem in the man, isn't it? Two problems here. And what did, where did the unbelief come from? Where did the unbelief come from? It came from his disciples, didn't it? They're the one that fostered that. And why is Jesus dealing with the son's father? Why is he dealing with him? 
because he's going to, Jesus is going to reveal himself to the man by his miracle here. That's why he's doing that. And when Jesus saw that a crowd was rapidly gathering, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and do not enter him again. We read about do not enter him again a couple times in scriptures, don't we? A couple times there. And crying out and throwing him into terrible convulsions, it came out. And the boy became so much like a corpse that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and raised him, and he got up. And when he had come into the house, the disciples began questioning him privately, why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, this kind cannot come out by anything but prayer. Anything but prayer. The man's comment, I do believe. The man repents right away, didn't it? Isn't that a repentance, I do believe? It's a repentance. And it's a great answer. It's just a great answer. And again, we see the compassion of Jesus in dealing with this father and the child, don't we? He deals with the child, he heals it. He deals with the father and the faith issue. Verse 30, And from there he went out and began to go through Galilee, and he was unwilling for anyone to know about it. Why is that? Verse 30, And from there he went out and began to go through Galilee, and he was unwilling for anyone to know about it. How come? <coughs> Because there's big crowds when they find out that Jesus is there. There's a big mob of people. And that's why he didn't want them to know. And then in verse 31, For he was teaching his disciples and telling them, The Son of Man is to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he has been killed, he will rise three days later. Now I think that's the first time I've heard that, that three days later thing in Mark. But they did not understand this statement, and they were afraid to ask him. Didn't understand again. We've seen this over and over with the uh, disciples. You know, when we get bad news at the house, and we get bad news occasionally, uh, the humanness in me says, let's open it up right away. Let's read what it says right away. And, you know, isn't that right? We want to find out. We want to deal with it. And sometimes I say to Bonnie, let's just be quiet for a little bit and not open up. You can't do anything about it on Friday afternoon anyway. You know, you can't deal with it till Monday. And so, let's just let it pass for the weekend. Verse 33, And they came to Capernaia, and when he was in the house, he began to question them, What were you discussing on the way? And they kept silent, for on the way they had discussed with one another which of them would be greatest. Now isn't that interesting? Honest to gosh. <laughs> and sitting down, he called the twelve and said to them, If anyone wants to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. Now he's talking servanthood now. That's what he's teaching right now. And taking a child, he set him before them. And taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one child like this in my name receives me. And whoever receives me does not receive me, but him who sent me. Jesus tells them again he's going to suffer. And what do they do? They talk about themselves, don't they? Who's going to be greatest? They, they forget all about that. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. And, I'm, you know, we do the same thing. We're just like them. Okay? And, uh, of course, we have the Holy Spirit. I guess we're not right then. We do the Holy Spirit in us now, which makes a difference. Yeah, Jesus tells them again he's going to suffer. And they talk about themselves. Jesus explains that in servanthood is greatness. In servanthood is greatness. And he receives a child. Why the child? Because children are most dependent, aren't they? They are most dependent in my name, in Jesus' name. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to hinder him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not hinder him, for there is no one who shall perform a miracle in my name and be able soon afterwards to speak evil of me. For he who is not against us is with us. You know, these, cur these statements encourage acceptance of other Christian ministries that are different from us. Okay, their doctrine is acceptable. Their doc but they play the guitar ladders, they jump higher, they don't sing our songs, uh, they have different traditions that we have. 
And there's many differences in ministries, but they're still in the Christian family. Mm -hmm. And we have to respect those. When I was a new Christian, that took me time for that. You know, that took me time for that. In verse 41, For whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because of your name as a follower of Christ, truly I say to you, he shall not lose his reward. Verse 42, And whoever causes one of these little ones who believe to stumble, it would be better for him if a heavy millstone hung around his neck, he had been cast into the sea. That's sad, isn't it? That's sad. You know, with a lot of Christian, Christian young people go to college, and there's a whole group of professors out there that just want to sway their thought. Yeah. They want to get them into the gay community, they want to get them into the heathen community, and uh, it's just a shame. It's just a shame. Uh, I always suggest send your, send your son or daughter to a Christian university. Now that's not perfect, but it's a step up. It's a step up. Uh, we have we've had some good friends. We're not as close as we were here in Cortez. And she went to a, a college that I was familiar with because I worked for that conference. It, it's a Christian ch church. It's a nomination. I worked for that denomination, so I'm familiar with it. <laughs> So I mentioned that to her, and she said, yeah, we used to make LSD in the chem labs. She said, what? You, know, you can't believe it sometimes. All right, verse 43. And if your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. For it is better for you to enter life crippled than having two hands to go into hell, into the unquenchable fire, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Now as we read on here, pay attention to that worm does not die. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than having two feet to be cast into hell, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. And if your eye causes you to stumble, cast it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. When Jesus mentions things in the Bible two or three times, it says, pay attention. When he mentions it a second time, it's important. When he mentions it a third time, it's really important. And so uh, three times is, is important. Uh, there's three stumbles there. There's the hands, there's the feet, and there are the eyes. Well, we know about the eyes. That's easy, isn't it? That's easy. Um, I took Philip to a, a party over over for an uh, organization he's in and, and they had girls behind the uh, serving food. And you know, they all have these loose tops, they got basketball hoots, you know, and they're bending out of this and so I, you gotta look away. Gotta look away. I don't, I don't allow my eyes to get me in trouble. I look down. Um, all right. So you guys run into that? Anywhere you're around them, you run into it. There they are. Uh, all right. Get rid of it. Put it aside in your life. The things that cause you to stumble, at least temporarily. My dad, when I got Christian, became a Christian, he started to give me unholy device. I love my dad, but he would draw me down the road of sin. And so when I realized what was happening, I rejected his advice. In. I didn't ask his advice. If he told me, I said thanks, and I didn't listen to it. Now, as I became a more mature Christian, I was able to deal with that. But, uh, and I can give you some example, but they're all horrible inside. I won't do that. Uh, it's hard. And some of those hands, feet, and eyes things are connected with your family. And so you need to continue to love your family or try to love them, but you need to reject where you're going with them. Where you're going with them. We had a woman, had a boy here, and she came over from Thanksgiving here one time, and she was doing drugs. You know, unbelievable. And so you have to put the things that, that are hindering you away. Family, friends, work, whatever it is. Whatever it is. Why? Because it's better to go, what does it say here? Where the worm does not die than being cast into outer hell. That's all hard stuff, but those problems that you have, they're not going to the judgment seat with you. You're going by yourself. My dad's not going with me. I'm going by myself. Gentlemen, interested about a dove, how a dove sees? Just see straight ahead doesn't see at the angles. No peripheral visual on a dove. And so it looks straight ahead. And that's what we need to do. We need to stop watching all this out there. Verse 49, for everyone will be salted with fire. Well, what does that mean? Everybody goes through trials. I don't care who it is, what it is, they are going to go through trials on this earth. That's part of the deal. This verse 50 is interesting. It says, salt is good, 
But if salt becomes unsalty, with what will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourself and be at peace with one another. I've looked at a bunch of commentaries on this verse and the consensus is we don't understand what he meant. It's really consensus. Very unusual. Very unusual. We know salt was used in the Bible time to do what? To preserve food. Salt was used as a preservative. They didn't have uh, other ways to preserve. They didn't have freezers. They didn't have other ways to preserve food. Be at peace with one another. And be at peace with one another is mentioned other places in the scripture. A peaceful life is a good life. Avoid conflicts if you can. You can't always, but sometimes you can. Jesus talks about hell more than most in the scriptures. He mentions hell a lot. And we know that hell is real and it's horrible, isn't it? It's real and it's horrible. So we thank goodness that Jesus died that we don't have to suffer in hell. We thank goodness for his shed blood at Calvary. We thank goodness for his miracle working powers in our lives. Praise God. Well, let's do a summary of the uh, chapter 9, Mark. Uh, again, we see that Mark is an action gospel. It's an action gospel. And Jesus is a savior of action. He does a lot of action. He does a lot of things. And this chapter is power packed. Uh, we see the kingdom of God coming in power. We see the transformation of Jesus. We see Elijah coming first, talking about Elijah and John the Baptist. Uh, Jesus heals a boy with an evil spirit. He talks about, oh, unbelieving generation. Uh, he talks about prayer needed for healing. Uh, Jesus again foretells the upcoming, his upcoming punishment and death. And the disciples unbelievably discuss which one of them is greater. My, oh, my. Uh, Non-apostolic ministries don't hinder. Ministries that are different from us, as long as their doctrine is fine, don't hinder. When he talks about punishment, where the worm does not die. All right. Again, we see the compassion of Jesus. We also see his authority and power in this chapter. And I'm so thankful that God has revealed all this to us in His Word. And as we are faithful to read and study and obey the Word, Jesus and all that He did is revealed to us. What a great Savior we have. What a great Savior. Amen, amen, amen. Hello, friends. This is Homer Knox again. I hope you enjoyed this video teaching. The question I have for you is, is your name written in the book of life? Are you born again? And are your sins forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ? Jesus was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He suffered and died under Pontius Pilate and the Romans. He was buried for three days and three nights. And he rose from the dead in power. And he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, according to the scriptures. There is salvation in no one else. If you have not done so, now, now is the time to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Or if you have walked away from this salvation and want to have your name rewritten in the book of life, please pray with me. Dear Jesus, I accept you as my personal Savior. Come into my heart. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I ask you to cleanse me with your precious blood. Thank you for giving me this salvation. Thank you for making me a new person, and thank you for the Holy Spirit now living inside of me. Amen and amen. If you prayed this prayer from your heart for the first time, you're now born again, you're saved, you're part of the Christian family. Praise God. Welcome. Welcome. If you prayed this prayer after slipping away, congratulations, you're back in the kingdom, you're back in the fold. There's another teaching on the menteachingmen.com website entitled, I Just Got Saved, Now What? And that video will help you on your new walk with Jesus Christ. Also, there are other videos on the Men Teaching Men website which would help you in your daily walk. God bless you.